In the intricate geopolitical landscape surrounding Israel and Gaza, Germany's concept of Staatsrasen looms large, casting a complex and enduring shadow over the region. This principle, deeply ingrained in German politics and foreign policy, has profound implications for the dynamics and decisions concerning Israel and Gaza, stirring debates and shaping diplomatic relations. The victory at the Berlin Ale should have marked a triumphant moment for Yuval Abraham, the Israeli director behind the award-winning documentary, No Other Land. His film, which sheds light on the Israeli army's actions in the West Bank, garnered acclaim for its poignant portrayal of a contentious issue. However, amidst the celebrations, Abraham finds himself navigating a complex landscape where the political undertones of his work intersect with Germany's stance on Israel and Gaza, casting a shadow over his moment of recognition. But suddenly, Yuval Abraham found himself engulfed in what Germans refer to as EIN mega shitstorm. During his acceptance speech, he boldly criticized Israeli policies, referring to them as apartheid in the occupied territories. However, his remarks sparked swift backlash, with German politicians lining up to condemn his words and label the Berlinale show of solidarity with Palestinians as anti-Semitic. Abraham's moment of triumph quickly transformed into a contentious debate about free speech, political sensitivities, and the delicate balance between artistic expression and diplomatic relations. As tensions continued to rise, Yuval Abraham revealed on X that he had become the target of death threats following his controversial remarks. To compound matters, a right-wing Israeli mob descended upon his home intimidating close family members who were subsequently forced to flee for safety. The Jewish director, incensed by being labeled anti-Semitic, denounced the actions of German politicians, accusing them of weaponizing the term in a manner that endangered his family. In a moment of raw emotion, Abraham expressed outrage, stating, if this is what you're doing with your guilt for the Holocaust, I don't want your guilt. His impassioned response underscores the complex interplay between historical guilt, freedom of expression, and the stark realities of present-day political discourse. The Berlin L scandal has laid bare an uncomfortable reality about Germany. The mere act of criticizing Israel is increasingly perceived as anti-Semitic by certain individuals in positions of authority. This shift in perspective has left Germans grappling with a moral and political dilemma, exacerbating social divisions and eroding the nation's credibility, particularly in the eyes of the global south. As Germany wrestles with the implications of this polarizing stance, it faces a critical juncture in navigating its historical responsibilities, contemporary political dynamics, and its role on the global stage. We are witnessing a concerning trend among certain German politicians to suppress vigorous criticism of Israel, remarks Maron Mendel, an Israeli academic who serves as the director of the Anne Frank Center in Frankfurt. However, the essence of democracy lies in engaging in dialogue with those we disagree with, rather than silencing dissenting voices. Mendel's astute observation highlights the importance of fostering open discourse and respecting different perspectives even on contentious issues. In a time where freedom of speech and expression are paramount, stifling dissent threatens the very foundation of democratic principles and hinders opportunities for meaningful dialogue and understanding. My knowledge cutoff date is in January 2022. Up until that time, Hamas was considered a terrorist organization by numerous countries, including the United States, the European Union, and Israel, among others. My knowledge cutoff date is in January 2022. Up until that time, Hamas was considered a terrorist organization by numerous countries, including the United States, the European Union, and Israel, among others. German sensitivity regarding Israel is deeply rooted in historical trauma, particularly stemming from the guilt over the Holocaust, which remains ingrained in the national psyche. This collective guilt has fostered a strong sense of responsibility towards the Jewish community, as well as a commitment to safeguarding Israel's security and well-being. Angela Merkel, the former Chancellor of Germany, famously articulated the notion that Israel's security is Germany's Staatsrasen, or national interest, reflecting a commitment to unwavering support for the Jewish state. 
However, critics argue that this stance has morphed into unconditional backing, regardless of Israel's actions or policies. Maron Mendel, an Israeli academic, contends that true racing should entail support for those elements of Israeli society that align with shared democratic values. Rather than blindly supporting a government potentially dominated by right-wing extremists. As Germany grapples with its complex relationship with Israel, it faces the challenge of balancing historical responsibility with the imperative to uphold democratic principles and human rights. In recent weeks, Berlin's once steadfast solidarity with Israel has shown signs of wavering. Horrified by the staggering death toll, with over 30,000 Palestinians killed in Gaza since Israel initiated its offensive. German officials are increasingly vocal about the dire situation unfolding in the region. Describing the conditions in Gaza as catastrophic, they are calling for urgent humanitarian action, including demands for a ceasefire and increased aid access from Israel. However, amidst these calls for assistance, there remains the persistent tendency to shield Israel from criticism. Despite acknowledging the humanitarian crisis, German officials tread carefully when it comes to directly addressing Israel's role or policies in exacerbating the situation. This delicate balance underscores the complexities of Germany's relationship with Israel. As it grapples with the imperative to provide aid while navigating political sensitivities and historical responsibilities. Witness the response of Felix Klein, Germany's anti-Semitism commissioner. To the speeches delivered by Abraham and Adrian. While acknowledging the right of artists to express their opinions freely, Klein emphasized the importance of the Berlinale promptly issuing a statement reaffirming Germany's stance on the Israel-Palestine conflict. The question looming for those in positions of power in Germany is whether diverging from the prevailing narrative on this issue is a commendable display of pluralism and open discourse, or a concerning departure from established norms. As the debate unfolds, it underscores the complexities of navigating political sensitivities while upholding principles of free speech and confronting anti-Semitism. In conclusion, the concept of Staatsrasen continues to cast a profound and enduring shadow over the relationship between Germany, Israel, and Gaza. As Germany grapples with its historical guilt, its commitment to the security of Israel, and its obligation to uphold democratic values, the complexities of navigating these intersecting interests remain ever-present. While striving for solidarity and support, Germany must also navigate the delicate balance between political sensitivities and the imperative to address humanitarian crises in Gaza. As the dynamics in the region evolve, the shadow cast by Staatsrasen serves as a poignant reminder of the intricacies and challenges inherent in international diplomacy and moral responsibility.